Hey everyone, Wags here from Eagle Dynamics, and welcome to this first peek at our radio communications for Case 3 Recovery and our upcoming carrier module. Now, as you may already know, uh, Case 3 in a nutshell is basic recovery at night or in really foul weather, which relies much more on communications from the carrier to bring the aircraft aboard. Now, this is still work in progress with items still to do, but even at this stage, we consider it probably the most realistic and authentic representation of carrier communications ever done for both a computer game and even professional use. Anyhow, I really hope you enjoyed this video, and let's get started. Alright, so here I am about uh, 40 miles behind the carrier and starting to approach the Marshall stack, which is where the aircraft will hold as each is sequentially uh, cleared for landing. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get a couple things ready before I go ahead and talk to the carrier. So I'll put the hook down, and I'll set my radar altimeter, master arm to safe, set my left EI to HUD, and the right one I'll bring up the uh, HSI. And enable the TAC in an ILS, which will be very critical. So let's go ahead and uh, talk to the carrier. Marshall, three zero four. Marky Moms, one four eight four four five. Angels, one three point five. State, eight point three. Three zero four. Courage, Marshall. Case three recovery. CD one approach. Expect final bearing. Three four four. Altimeter is two nine nine three. Three zero four. Marshall Mothers, one six four. Radio. Two, one, DME, Angels, six. Expected approach time is three, two. Three, zero, four. Marshall on the three, four, four. Twenty, one, DME, Angels, six. Expected approach time is three, two. Three, zero, four. Read back correct. Okay, let's first set the uh, tack end to our carrier at uh, 74. And I'll set the ILS for uh, channel 11. And we'll set our course line, which matched what uh, our uh, Marshall controller told us, which was 164, our radial. And now let's go ahead and fly towards that radial, which we can see on the HSI. Now, key points that the Marshall told us, one was, again, the radial from the carrier that we'll be orbiting at. Uh, the distance uh, from the carrier to the nearest end of the marshal, which is going to be 21 miles, uh, we're going to need to be at 6,000 feet. And our push time to uh, fly from the marshal to the carrier is 32, meaning 32 minutes past the current hour. I'm going to go ahead and uh, put the uh, checklist up on my AMPCD. Radar altimeter, HUD. Set up a couple more things. Cool. So um, right now, again, as you can see on the HSI, I'm flying towards the radial. And once I hit it, I'll go ahead and uh, fly towards the uh, radial and then start my uh, stack orbit once I hit 21 miles on the defined radial. And you can also see that I descended about uh, uh, 4,000 feet per minute and coming down to the uh, directed 6,000 feet, at which point I'll level out. And actually, I'll probably engage the uh, barometric altitude hold at that point. And you'll notice on the HUD, we have the uh, course line arrow. And as we get closer and closer uh, to the course line, uh, it'll start to move towards the velocity vector. And what I'll try to do is I'll try to time my uh, turn such that it's centered up on the velocity vector as I roll out on the radial. And here I go. Now, of course, because I set up the tack in, we can see the uh, distance to the carrier, about 27 miles, CRG, uh, short for courage. And again, once I hit uh, 21 miles from the carrier on my radial, I'll go ahead and I'll start my first turn. Now, probably one of the trickier elements of the Marshall stack is that you have a very defined push time. Again, in this case, 32 minutes after the hour. And you want to hit a very specific point in space, exactly 21 miles from the carrier on the radial at that time. And it's a matter of understanding 
uh, your air speeds, your bank angles, in the times uh, in your turn and in your leg to make that happen right on time. Now, because we're pretty much in the orbit now, we can go ahead and we'll contact Marshall and let them know that we're established within the Marshall stack. Three zero and warp. Established Angels six. State eight point zero. Three zero four. Roger. State eight zero. So at this point now, the Marshall controller knows that we're in the stack at our assigned altitude. And there are, you know, quite possibly other aircraft stacked uh, above, above us or below us at 1,000 foot increments. So I'm almost here at uh, 21 miles, and I'll start my first turn at 30 degrees and at a uh, ground speed of 300 notch, knots, which you can see on the HSI to the right of the aircraft symbol. And as long as you maintain um, you know, roughly 300 ground speed and are using 30 degree bank angles, uh, at that point, generally your turns, uh, each will be about a minute and a half and each leg will be about two minutes, assuming that you're doing a 10 mile marshal. And um, if you use the math of, you know, what is it? Uh, five miles per minute, you can pretty much uh, get some pretty accurate timing uh, knowing those figures. And I think it's also important to understand that with Marshall stacks, there's really no hard and fast rule that every pilot has to subscribe to. Uh, different pilots have different te techniques that work for them. And the different you know, guys I've talked to who've done this for you all have uh, different uh, ways they do it. You know, for me, I found doing a 30 degree uh, bank angle at a 300 knots ground speed on 10 mile legs it works pretty good. I can really, you know, easily do the math uh, in my head to make it work out. And most times I can get uh, my push time within, you know, about five to 10 seconds, which is what you want to be doing. Uh, the outside time you want to hit your push time is uh, 10 seconds. You really don't want to go any later than that. Yeah, so it looks like I got some uh, time to kill. So I actually should have done this earlier to set up my uh, bingo fuel. Yeah, I think I'll set it to about, what? 5,000 pounds or so. No, no more. There you go. And actually, when you have a night lighting, you can actually adjust the um, uh, intensity of the uh, IFE and adjust my DDIs a little bit. So running down the uh, uh, the downwind leg. So it's going to be, again, about uh, 10 miles on a leg. And uh, using that, you can then also you know, use that again for timing that you know that in this case, uh, the push point is at 21 miles. So we'll half that at 26 and then the full length at uh, 31. You can then use that with the rule of five miles per minute uh, to help with your timing. And of course, like most things, the Hornet, uh, to get good at it, it takes a lot of practice. And, you know, getting pretty good with the timing for me, it took a while. And like a lot of things, it, the challenge of it and getting good at it is, I think, you know, honestly, probably one of the most enjoyable parts of learning a detailed aircraft like this. Yeah, it can be a little bit frustrating at first, but once you actually do master it, you have that, sell, that sense of accomplishment, which goes a long way to the enjoyment of the product, I think. And being a 10-mile uh, leg, I'll be doing my uh, next turn right now at 10 miles, uh, 10 plus 21 or 31. So I'll bring it around, and this turn should take me again about a minute and 30 seconds. And then the next leg after that will be two minutes, and then I have a push time of uh, 32 after the hour. And looking at the Zula time in the bottom left corner of the HUD, I can see that I'm pretty close to on time here. You also may notice I put the uh, HSI up on the right DDI instead of the central uh, MPCD, mainly be that way I can keep a very close eye on it, uh, particularly the uh, ground speed, which is to the left of the aircraft simple. And uh, you know, pretty important to keep yourself right at uh, a number that you associate with a defined um, uh, turn rate in times within your circuit. 
uh, you start deviating too much, uh, you're going to have some issues. For me, uh, generally, when I'm in the stack, I use the barometric hold, but then I really don't do the uh, auto throttles. Instead, I use it manually uh, to make sure I can keep my ground speed right where I want it to be. Okay, rolling out at almost 31 miles, and so we're looking at uh, almost uh, 30 minutes. So it looks like I'm going to be a little bit uh, fast. Uh, again, assuming uh, two minutes uh, for this leg. So I'm going to slow my ground speed uh, down a bit. And what I'll be doing is I'll look for my first uh, kind of check mark at 26 uh, miles. I should be at uh, 31 minutes after the hour. So still using a barometric hold and just doing manual throttle adjustments to try to get my uh, uh, ground speed down a little bit. So that way I'm going to hopefully hit uh, 26 miles at exactly uh, 31 minutes after the hour. And it looks like I'm going to be pretty close here. Okay, so 26 minutes and 31, so right on speed, uh, right on time where I need to be. So now I can go ahead and increase my airspeed a bit and bring it up to a 300 knots ground speed, which that should then allow me to hit my push time uh, right on time at uh, 32 minutes after the hour. You also probably notice I have my uh, heading right down the radial, uh, such that the uh, course line is you know right down the center of the uh, velocity vector, which is exactly where you want it to be. So coming up on 21 miles, and timing's looking pretty good here. So once I do hit 21 miles, I'll go ahead and I'll uh, talk to Marshall and tell her that I'm commencing my approach. And right on time. In five seconds. Three zero is warm. Commencing. State seven point three. Altimeter two nine point nine or three. Three zero four. Radar contact two zero miles. Expect final bearing three four four. Three zero four. Switch approach. Three zero is warm. Okay, that happened pretty fast, so let me try to break this down a bit. So after I contacted Marshall uh, with the commencing, she handed me off to the approach controller. Uh, once I talked to the approach controller, he basically told me uh, the bearing of the ship and the uh, final heading for landing. And uh, while I was doing that, uh, I set my descent uh, rate to about 4,000 feet per minute and my airspeed at 250 knots. And then once I passed 5,000 feet, I decreased my descent rate to uh, 2,000 feet per minute. And then also once I passed through 5,000 5, feet, I informed the approach controller that I was platform. So up ahead, you probably see a little green dot, and that, that's actually the carrier, and that's the uh, long range lineup light. And this is a super handy feature of the uh, new carrier coming up. And it will show green if you are left of lineup, and it will show right if you're right of lineup. And if it's blinking, you're uh, uh, further away than you should be. And if it's steady, you're closer in. And then if you're right on center line for landing, the light will turn amber. So you really want to be shooting for amber light and controlling your approach uh, to get that light. 
And we have the uh, amber light now. So at this point, right now we don't have the ACLS uh, in quite yet, but we've uh, put together the comms to support this. So even though you're not seeing the ACLS indications now, um, the uh, comms uh, will be representing that. Uh, so that way when we do have the ACLS system up and operational, the comms will be all ready to go. So something else to keep in mind when you're descending at a particularly 4,000 feet per minute, uh, you may want to throw the air brake out periodically to make sure you can maintain that 250 knots. And eight miles is critical. Eight miles is the point where you're going to drop your landing gear and bring your flaps down to full. At this point now, it's actually a bit like flying a case one with the uh, landing gear and the flaps down. And you're adjusting your airspeed and your pitch trim to get on speed uh, for your approach. And that's what I'm doing right now. While it's still at the same time maintaining uh, 1,200 feet uh, AGL. So I'm going to intercept the glide slope and follow it down once I intercept it. And actually just uh, saw the glide slope uh, pop up on the ILS right now. And again here we're hearing some of the uh, communications for the automatic carrier landing system, the ACLS, which will be uh, coming hopefully soon. And based on how we can see, we're a bit below glide slope, that we're about just uh, 4.8 nautical miles from the carrier. We are on speed, and we have a nice amber light on our lineup light, so we're good to go there. And it just popped green, so I'll bring the aircraft a bit to the left uh, to get my correction. And then I'll come back right uh, to get myself right down the center line. I've also brought up my uh, comm menus. Okay, about 3.6 miles out, we just passed through glide slope, and now we're starting to uh, follow the indications down uh, to the carrier. So, you know, as you might imagine, we're just going to be flying to keep the flight uh, path marker centered up with the uh, localizer and the glide slope lines on the HUD for the ICLS. And all the while, of course, we'll be uh, adjusting our throttle to keep ourselves uh, on speed. Okay, 2.5 miles out, and we're just a little bit above uh, glide slope, uh, but our uh, localizer looks really good. Nice amber light on the long range lineup lights. And it's still a bit high, and it's starting to try to bring her down by reducing throttle just very slowly. 1.6 out, and of course, at three quarters of a mile, we'll start to hear from. Uh, uh, the tower and then the LSO. Okay, I'm lined up on my needles. And one mile out. Okay, she's down a little left and actually I had to cut past and I was exactly like, sure why. But anyhow, I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.